right, we are live. I'm going to talk as if we are, because as I've said before, it never tells me when we actually are. Welcome to Think Fast Live. We've done live videos before. We've done Think Fasts before, but now we are committed to every Thursday night doing a live Think Fast. Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central. Live is the best way to watch it. You can interact, comment, um, join in the fun. But if you don't catch it live, you can always come back to the Focus Press Facebook page and catch up on uh, the follow-up or it'll be there for watching on demand at any other time. And so I'm joined as always, Joe and Will with me uh, this week on Think Fast. We're going to look at two news stories. And that's one of the things we want to do with Think Fast is kind of look at what's going on. What are the hot topics, hot talking points in the culture? Um, Will's got one for us. Joe's got another. And then we're going to break down a little bit. And our, our title for this is called Tolerance Was a Lie. And you're going to see why with these two stories. Will, go ahead with the first one. Sure. And Jack, I know you already briefly said it, but we, especially if you're watching it live, we want you to comment, share your thoughts. That's kind of the, one of the big purposes of yeah. being live. But uh, the, the first story that we want to talk about is something that happened a few days ago at the Mall of America in Minnesota, where there's about a two minute video going around online that's been kind of shared and, and kind of really gone viral. This guy that was wearing a Jesus Saves t shirt, neon yellow Jesus Saves shirt. So it said Jesus saves on the front and then on the back, uh, it had the, remember, you guys remember the coexist like bumper stickers. It had that logo crossed out and then, you know, above and below it said, Jesus is the only way. And what you hear in this video is these two security guards berating this guy saying that he was religious, so that he was uh, soliciting in a religious fashion that people were offended, that guests had escalated to them, that he was offending people. And so that he needed to either take his shirt off or leave the mall. Seriously, that's all he was doing, wearing the shirt. Um, I read something like where a few days ago he had been actually preaching outside of the mall. But for this particular instance, he was just wearing the shirt. In fact, in the uh, video, he's got earbuds in. So from all everything we can see and from everything I've read, wasn't bothering anybody, wasn't talking to anybody. He was just wearing a shirt that said, Jesus saves and these two security guards, again, about two minutes straight, were kind of they were going back and forth saying, you've got to either take your shirt off or leave the mall. You can't shop here with that shirt on. It's offending people. Um, if you read more into the story, apparently they didn't actually end up forcing him to leave. Um, but again, it, they, they were very insistent. I'm not sure what changed their minds, but that's the first story. Uh, just kind of, again, I encourage you, go watch it. It's kind of mind-boggling to, to watch these two security guards say, you can't wear a shirt that says Jesus saves, take it off or leave the mall. But Joe, get us into the other story. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is, of course, in hockey. This is a big deal. I follow a ton of hockey uh, pages on on Facebook. And um, man, blew up. I, it was just everywhere. It was even all over ESPN. So a lot of people, I think, may have seen this if you're in the sports world. But that is of Ivan Provorov, um, a a player on the Philadelphia Philadelphia Flyers he was uh they're playing the Ducks Anaheim Ducks um Pride Night I can't stand that the league is doing this that NHL is doing it but it's Pride Night and so what they do is they uh in warm-ups which is about a 15-minute warm-up the team skates around they have these pride themed jerseys they don't wear them during the game but they have these pride themed jerseys and then they auction those off and and sell them for um LGBTQ charities and such well Ivan Provorov is a Russian Orthodox um, or is of the Russian Orthodox Church and decided I'm not going to participate. It's not that he went out there with with a regular jersey on. He just said, I'm going to I choose to sit out. I'm, I'm going to um, sit out of warm up. It's just 15 minutes. It's not the game. Nothing huge. But people blew up. I mean, all of the all of the pundits, the sports writers, uh, everybody blew up about how intolerant it was that he didn't go out and skate in this warm up with the pride jersey. And that he didn't have a jersey to auction off for um, the LGBTQ agenda. A lot. Here's the interesting thing. This story made it huge. ESPN writers, the athletic uh, writers, TSN, uh, which is Canada's version. I mean, everybody's touching on this uh, subject. A lot of the people from what I was reading were like, what's the big deal? The guy just went out. With without a you know or he didn't the commenters you he mean the, the the pundits the were all yeah. up in arms the pundits were all in arms yes sorry I should have clarified the commenters underneath each article and there were multiple this was everywhere I'm telling you every major outlet that I follow cover this um, all the commenters were like that's coercion that is trying to get him to do something that's against his conscious uh, conscience and so this is with these two stories it's a fascinating 
we're in a fascinating place. Jack, we're going to go around to you. We've, we've told both stories of, of what's been in the news recently. There's a lot of things in the news, but these two stood out to us for a specific reason. Yeah. As I said at the top, we are calling the, this, uh, the title of this one is Tolerance Was a Lie because, man, anybody watching this is probably old enough to remember 10, 15 years ago. That was the biggest word. You saw it. You heard it everywhere. Tolerance, tolerant. We've got to tolerate one another. No hate. Just tolerate. And, you know, it's not your business what anybody does in their bedroom. And I just all of those things of like, just leave people alone, leave people alone. And now a guy is in trouble for not participating, for not being, you know, like not only is he. Uh, I mean, he didn't say, I hate you guys. He just said, no, thanks. And and now it's it's an issue. Or the one Will's talking about, just wearing a shirt that says Jesus saves. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to tolerate. Why can't we tolerate? In fact, hockey had, the NHL has a campaign called Hockey is for Everybody. And it's a race and it's it's a critical theory, kind of, you know, marginalized groups and inclusion and all that stuff. And it's like, well, I guess hockey isn't for everyone. It's not for right. Russian Orthodox people. It's not for people who believe right. the Jewish faith the Muslim faith or the Christian faith and take it literally the thing about will uh, brought up in the mall. You can't wear a shirt in a mall that says, this is what I believe. This is my religious belief. Well, so tolerance was totally a lie and it wasn't just a lie. It was a, it was a, a fake. It was a game. It was a play that they were running. Uh, I wrote on I, this at focuspress.org a while back called it was the postmodern pump fake that they said, okay, okay, let's just all agree to get along. It never works that way. Right. I thought it was, you know, you go to the other side and this is what we always seem to do. And on the one hand, it just gets your blood boiling. But like, what if an atheist had worn a shirt that was making fun of God? Are they kicking him out? They're going to do the exact same Can thing. Can you imagine the, some of the other t-shirts that were at the Mall of America? Oh, yeah. Probably obscenities, all kind of stuff. But no, oh, it's yeah. the one that says Jesus saves. That's the one that was asked to leave. And what's yeah. interesting to me about that is, like I said, that was on the back. I'm sorry, Joe, I'll get back to you. No, 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 go for it. What was on the back of his shirt was that thing that was again popular 10 to 15 years ago that coexists that you used to see on the back of, of cars, the bumper sticker. I don't see those much anymore because to me, that was that was emblematic of the tolerance movement, right? Just everybody coexists, everybody lived together. You know, it had the it had the Muslim symbol, it had the you know Buddhist, but it also had the, the Christian cross. That's not the the play anymore, as Jack's talking about. That's not trying to push. There's no more of this coexist. And it, it's alarming. It truly really is. But Joe, Joe, sorry, get back to you. No, no, I was just going to say, um, Provorov, I had read something that said he did support hockey is for everyone. He had done one of their their things or whatever else. And the point is, there's no winning with these people. There's no appeasing these people. All the Christians that, well, can we just kind of, you know, we need to love everyone. Yes, we do. We should love everyone. That's Christians are known for their love, right? Let's define love. Let's break it down because there's no winning with them. If you sit out, he didn't go out there and make a big deal about it. Like you said, Jack, he didn't say I hate. Uh, homosexuals he said nothing like that he just chose to sit out that wasn't good enough for them this is a war they're waging against anybody who doesn't bow to, bow the knee to them it's time for christians to stand up and to recognize that no matter how much we try to reach across the aisle no matter how, how much we try to appease the other side be the good guys we're super nice we're super tolerant there's no winning there's no such thing as tolerance until you're willing to say everything you're doing is a thousand percent correct we back it we support it monetarily and everything well, else well, there has to be some point where we say enough is enough, and it needs to be way back at the beginning. Well, and the the bar, I guess the line continues to shift. It's not right. as if you can say, okay, we'll, we'll uh, agree with your tolerance thing up to this point with this behavior, but after that, we can't. No, they just keep – the line keeps moving. You know, they're, they're not going to be satisfied until you completely su you know, capitulate to every single thing that they teach. And I remember back when – you know, I was young and I going with my dad, Brad Harib, on all the on all his seminars. And one of the things that he taught on the most was, was creation versus evolution, right? About how this was a, a huge threat to our kids' faith and that they need to make sure that that they've got their belief system shored up. And that's, of course, still the case. But I kind of look back at that now and think, man, the the concerns for my kids is is gonna is not really gonna be an evolutionary mindset anymore. Like, of, of course, that's still gonna be a concern that I need to make sure that my kids have a you know strong foundation in but our kids are going to be dealing with so many more things than just evolution attacks on on yeah. christianity or you know atheism versus creationism they're dealing with this stuff with the tolerant yeah. stuff with the lgbtq with the transgenderism and so really what it does for me and jack i'll hand it back to you is it really sobers it's very sobering for me as i consider that i have a one-year-old and i have a a son that is going to be growing up in 
a culture where he's going to be 20 years past this point where guys are getting kicked out of the mall of America for wearing Jesus safe shirt. And so what's that world going to look like again, just a very sobering thought, not much analysis to go with that, but just a very sobering thought as you consider, we've really got to make sure that our kids faith is solid because they're going to, and grandkids because they're living in this world. Yeah, for sure. So I want to hammer a little bit more on something Joe was, was kind of getting at there. The idea that, and I think a lot of the Joe, Joe mentioned a lot of the comments on the Provorov issue were very much like, this is, this is wrong. Can he just have his opinion too? Like, let's not force him. And, and a lot of people want to go back to kind of like the nineties, early 2000 thing of everybody live and let live. Uh, and a lot of Christians kind of bought into that and, and, and want to go back to that. Like, we'll go back where we let you do your thing. You let us do ours and, and everybody will just kind of, you know, I mean, the, the word you brought up that was on the guy's shirt coexist. There is no coexisting. It will, it, the, the, the neutral ground thing was a transitionary period. It never parks there. And it's kind of the slippery slope thing that when you go over the top of that hill, you start sliding back down it. And all you can do is push this boulder up to where it rolls back the other way, or it just keeps going in a free fall to where we're at transgenderism. We're at, I mean, the pedophilia grounds are being laid already bestiality, anything else. I'm like, we said this, I mean, we've been writing this at Focus Press from day one of the slippery slope, and a lot of other people have too, of there's no breaks on the slippery slope. And so where people are like, well, let's go back to where it was just neutral and we all tolerated each other. Because what happened with Provorov is afterwards, he just said, well, I respect everyone. I respect everyone's choices, but I'm, I, you know, my beliefs, it doesn't work that way. There, there isn't my beliefs and your beliefs, your choice, my choice. And you could just say, I think it's wrong. Just live with that own up to it because as joe said nobody gets appeased nobody goes oh well okay i'll respect you you respect me own it say i think it's wrong and live with the consequences and that to will your other point about what our kids are going to grow up with get used to living in the consequences get used to living in this world i'm uh doing some work on the side you know with secular businesses it is so hard uh, everywhere you look is just drenched in this culture there there was one it was a uh product line for for young children, for like preschoolers. And what they had was a, they have a pride month line for preschoolers. I, I mean, this stuff is surrounding wow. us everywhere. And it's like oh one ideology goodness. is going to win one or the other. And through evangelism, through raising our kids, as you say, to, to hold the line on this, to, to showing people, this is the fruits of this. Look how a drag queen story hour is the fruits of all this. It's awful. This is not acceptable. You look at, you know, the, 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 just the people's lives who have been ruined. We need to hold that line so people can see there is an alternative that is true. And it's not, everybody gets to have it their own way. I think this is brought up. Go ahead, Joe. No, I was just going to say, I think this speaks to, to parents, to ministers, to elders, uh, anybody that's in authority, you have to take hard line stances on these things. And I know a lot of them do church of Christ. I, I praise the church of Christ for that. Cause a lot of them do, but we have to be taking a hard line stance on things like this gender roles in general. I mean, feminism, obviously we're big against that. Like we have to back this up to the very beginning and say, this is what God wants. It, it's not enough to just to allow feminism in the church and to allow, you know, the, the wives to usurp their husbands and all this, and then to draw the lines here. We have to lead the culture and say, this is what's wrong and this is what's right and be very black and white about these things going forward because postmodernism has pervaded everything. Sorry, we'll go for it. I was just, just going to, we are committed to making this a think fast. So I don't mean to open up a whole other can of worms to discuss, but I did want to make this point. Jack brought up evangelism. We're really going to have to start really rethinking our evangelism tactics in, in a way. Because you consider the, the type of world Jack has brought this up on, on our podcast before about the positive, uh, neutral, negative world towards Christianity, that we're no longer in a neutral world as far as for Christianity. We're in a world and we're in a society, a culture that is completely opposed to it. They hate it. They, they, they Again, because that was the question that I kept asking myself. Why are people so offended by religion? Why are people so offended by a shirt that says Jesus saved? You know, see a shirt, keep walking. What's the problem? Why, if there really were escalations in this this mall of America, where people went to the guards saying, "Hey, this guy's offending me." Why do people get so offended? It's because of of the the guilt factor that that religion plays, and and so they they just they they, they hate it. They're going to do everything that they can to stop it. And so bring it all back back around to saying, this the evangelism you know tactics that are based around making people like us and like our church and like the things that we do. 
can't be about that anymore. It's going to have to be, no, this is what the Bible says, and we are trying to live like Christ. You either follow us or you don't type of thing. And again, we could get into that for a while, but it, it's it's alarming how, how offended people are by religion these days, and it's only going to get worse. I'm going to close with this to build on your point that love is the answer. Love is what will win people over, but love right now is not making people feel comfortable and, and like that there's nothing wrong. Love is being the one person in their life who cares about them enough to tell them the truth. How many people have you seen of like the, that had the transgender conversion surgeries and like it ruined their lives and, and they're, they're coming out telling their story, like, please don't let other people do it. And those people are silenced because they don't want those people to talk, loving somebody enough to say, this is not okay. This is not going to work. This is not, you know, God has a better way. Jesus saved you or died to save you. He's, he's, he's got, got this it. plan for your life. Go in this direction. This is what you need. Got to be the one person who loves him enough to sit in the locker room and not put it on, to be the person who wears the Jesus save shirt, to be the person who goes against all of this. And so we're going to wrap right there. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes is our target. Uh, Cause we don't, uh, we don't, and we know everybody else doesn't have an hour to burn every Thursday night, although we could talk about this stuff for hours. Um, Thanks to those who watched, uh, to those commenting. I uh, see our uh, old friend Clint uh, uh, back in Colorado uh, joining us as well. Uh, so shout out there. Um, again, this is a new feature every week, Lord willing, Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central. To keep up with Think Fast, Think Deeper, the Gym podcast, you see Will's banner there. Everything we're doing at Focus Press, like our page on Facebook, Focus Press uh, INC, Inc., um, and then go to focuspress.org, join the mailing list. We'll me email you once a week and say, here's everything we're up to articles, podcasts, videos, all kinds of content, trying to keep Christians apprised of what's going on in the culture and what God would have us do with all this. So I want to thank Joe and will uh, for coming on. Thanks to everybody who's watching either live or catching it later. And we'll talk to you guys next week.